Greetings, everyone. This is First and Twenty Seven Fifty Three with another episode of the Hearts of Iron Four Spanish Axis Alternative History Campaign. That was a mouthful. Uh, title is definitely a mouthful. I've been doing some YouTube watching online, <coughs> and uh, I feel like I've been doing things completely wrong in this game after watching some tutorials uh but um it's you know you learn as you uh go along you learn as you play with a lot of these games and again this is a uh let's play it's not a tutorial there's a number of good tutorials out there um i think paradox has its own tutorial but there's another guy named praetorian who i've been watching and he's got uh some pretty good advice so if you're looking for a tutorial Go ahead and uh, search for a tutorial Hearts of Iron. This is more of a Let's Play again. And we are learning as we are going along. We've definitely made some mistakes. Uh, I've made huge mistakes in production. One first mistake I want to correct. The first thing I have to correct, really, is we have to go for... What is it? This little notification up here. Modifying the government. And uh, I've been doing volunteers only for my uh, recruitable population, my conscription law. And uh, with the war tension at 100%, I can really up this conscription. Um, there's a lot of these things I can kind of skip at the moment. Some of them have negative impacts. Limited conscription doesn't have any negative impacts and gives a 2.5% recruitable population, but I'm gonna shoot ahead to extensive conscription and this is available to me because I am fascist and yeah, because I'm fascist. You can either be fascist or communist for this. Interesting. Um, it does create a it does increase the amount of training time by ten percent. However, the recruitable population goes up to five percent, and one of my big issues up here is low manpower. So going up to 5%, this is going to explode our population because right now it's only 1.5. So it's going to cost me, oh boy, cost me 300 political power. Yeah, I'm going to do it anyways because I have a ton of political power stored up. I have 614, so here we go. And that almost got us up to a million. We went from 91,000 to almost a million. Huge population explosion. Uh, step number two, export. I'm not going to worry about the export focus or the trade law right now, but the civilian economy, the economic law, does need to be adjusted. We are now operating under a civilian economy, which has 30% uh, slower construction speed for civilian factories and for the military factories. So we're going to switch right ahead to a war economy, which is going to give us uh, increased construction speed and it does increase consumer factory goes by 15% well let's see that's 15 20 total mobilization hmm actually I might go for total mobilization yep recruitable population oh recruitable population drops 3% with total mobilization where it has no impact War economy, that's what it was. War economy has no impact on the recruitable population, so we're going to go ahead and go with that one. There we go. Okay. Uh, I think I have enough political power for one more move, and I'm going to worry about the trade law later. This is actually not bad, trade law. Export focus. Resources to market, 50%. Free trade, 80%. Yuck. Closed economy. Does not give the increased construction speed, research time, or factory output. Limited exports also. Not good. A lot less resources to market, though. That's interesting. And a closed economy has no resources to the market. Or no resources will be exported. Huh. Not something I'm going to do right now. I might consider that later. I do want to increase my uh, military hype command by appointing a military ad high command advisor general I guess 
uh, who is an infantry expert. Because most of our units are infantry. Now, that being said, we have to go and address the unit situation because it's kind of ridiculous. Right now, the light tanks, you know what? Hmm. Right now, our armored division has got a bunch of light tanks. And if you check out our logistics, we are, we don't have enough light tanks stored right now. Actually, let's go to production. We're only getting uh, 1.35 infantry or tank equipment per day, and we need 227. This means that we're not going to have, it's going to be over halfway through the year before we get this tank battalion up, so, or this tank division up. So I'm going to make some adjustments. And it seems like we have a lot of motorized equipment. Logistically, we have 220, 262 motorized equipment stored. So, I'm thinking I should adjust the divisions here. We could probably reduce the amount of light tanks we have. That'll reduce it down to 180, which won't be too far off, but this will be a extremely weak division, so we have to add a mobile battalion. I think I want to add a motorized infantry battalion, which will require more manpower and some infantry equipment. This will cost us 35 experience. Probably what I should have been doing from the beginning. This will keep the speed up with the infantry divisions. Uh, I believe it boosts our... Uh, what does it do? It boosts our soft attack a little bit, a lot. I don't know, the armor, light tanks are better at soft attack. How do you like that? Uh, let's reset this. Okay. What I think I want to do is I'm going to remove one light tank, two light tanks. And let's add... All right, reset that again. I'm going to remove these light tanks. And we will create a line of motorized infantry here. And I think that is the best move. Good. Soft attack is still really high here. Defense... Yeah, the infantry has much stronger defense than the armor, which is good. Breakthrough is really up there. Alright, I think this is going to be our armor division for now. Four light tank battalions and motorized infantry. The other thing I was thinking about was a recon battalion 
could help. Doesn't really slow us down. I was thinking about an engineer battalion as well. We'll need some support equipment here. Oh, this is going to take up most of our... current experience. Alright. I like the engineering uh, battalion co company because it helps us maneuver through certain campaigns, through certain uh, terrains. And the recon company is good because uh, watching the tutorials, this helps us uh, develop better strategies oh that helps us in the river the forest the hills the mountains yeah it helps us a lot um we're gonna go ahead and it's gonna be a hell of a division okay let's go for it and we are now 21 percent filled with the equipment we need but there should be a lot of motorized equipment available all right we'll see if I do that right unread naval battles um should try to clear these out yeah that was a devastating defeat we already took a look at that where else down here near the African coast we lost two destroyers to a squad of three ships. Three French ships. And we lost five destroyers here to a armada. That's a huge armada. British and French. No. That's Dutch. Okay. Unread naval convoy rating. We were doing well. Taking out a lot of the French convoys. That looks like 10 total French convoys. And looks like there's a naval battle right here. Oh boy. Seven destroyers. And uh, we've got four destroyers with some submarines these are on the way so that might actually increase the strength two submarines and three destroyers on the way that might help us win this actually I'm interested to see what happens in that battle alright so I think I handled my division okay so that is handled the division uh, templates have been handled, and uh, eh, it's going to still take us some time to uh, fill in this armor division. But I think I'm going to reset my deployment. Ah, I wanted to set it to uh, North Africa, but apparently I can't. So let's instead just send it to Granada. We'll deploy the armor down there. Then hopefully they can get across quickly to Africa without being attacked by any British or Dutch ships in the area. Okay, so handled my uh, government issues. I've readjusted that. I've readjusted my uh, armored division template production. We're going to need to work on that. One thing we can do to help this is deal with the civilian factories we certainly currently have 14 available so I'm gonna go ahead and build another military factory let's drop it right in Madrid there and that should help March 3rd this year we'll have our next civilian factory or uh, military factory good dockyards uh, my naval focus, since I can't, I don't think I can compete with the French or the British uh, for naval, f for surface ships, 
our command of the seas, I'm going to try to command the uh, underwater seas, and we're going to go for a submarine. Now, the B-class versus the C-class. The thing about the B-class, it has a little bit more reliability at 80%. While the C-Class has 76 reliability. I don't really know what that means exactly. Uh, the B-Class is faster. Slightly faster. But the C-Class has a greater torpedo attack. And I think I know what that means. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start constructing the C-Class. And I think we can construct up to six of them. Uh, without Before we can take a hit on the oil. Actually... This will make us negative one oil. They'll continue to reduce speed. That's eh, not bad. We'll go with that. Insufficient resources. Now, can I trade someone for oil? The United States. Will they take oil? Will they give us oil? We'll see if the United States will trade oil with us. I wonder if that will improve diplomatic relations and try to keep the United States out of the war. That's really my goal there. All right, there is a battle going on right now. I think I just reviewed this. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to talk about in this video before we get things started is strategy. So my overall strategy was to conquer... Algiers and Tunisia to get grab the uh, steel resources there and possibly get some of southern France get the resources there but all that seemed to fail uh, I don't know how Italy was able to claim all this I guess they controlled the majority of the the region I don't know how they were able to claim this from us um, but we're gonna redirect our focus away from Italy and away from these units and uh, I think I'm going to try to capture Casablanca and maybe Marrakech, if I said that right. Uh, no resources here, but Casablanca has 3.2 million population. Um, and Marrakech has 1.87 population, so we can at least grab population. And link up with our uh, Rio de Oro province here. And then hopefully drive further south. I don't know how long we're going to be able to drive against the French. Because eventually there will probably be a Vichy French government formed. Um, which will be allied with Germany and the Axis. So it will join the faction. We won't be able to claim their territories. But French West Africa has 14.95 million population. Which is huge, uh, especially since our home population. I think if we look at the home population up there, our core eligible core population available is two point twenty five point fourteen. Eligible non core. See, I don't know how to core provinces. That's another thing. That's oh, that is a core state. Probably get cored over time. That's something I'm gonna have to look into. Um, also, continuing to drive south would point us in the direction of capturing these French and British ports over here. And by doing that, it will reduce the amount of range that the British and the French have in the Mediterranean. And once that, so we're gonna concentrate, I think, on West Africa here. And until Vichy France comes along and uh, grab as much territory and population as we can that we can recruit from and then hopefully um, with France out of the war Britain will be pretty weak and that might be a good opportunity to capture Portugal which does have some significant resource deposits right there 300 tungsten 76 tungsten those are pretty valuable. It also has some strategic naval bases out here in the Mid-Atlantic. 
This is Madeira. And right out here, we have the Azor Islands. And I think the British shipping lanes go right through the Azor Islands. So that would be a great submarine base for us to uh, acquire. So that's our overall uh, readjustments. And I think I took, I took about 20 minutes to do that. Okay, wow. Uh, so I'll end this episode here. We'll do a cut here. And then if you want to continue to watch, um, in the next episode, we'll uh, start the clock and see how these adjustments help. One more thing I wanted to do before I forget. I want to send this uh, cavalry south. We can't send them uh, directly across, but we're going to send them right here. Yeah, we'll send them to Gibraltar. There's a port there. And we'll leave from there and hopefully get across quickly. Alright, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you next one.